Welcome to the latest in our series of Top Med Talks 2. In these podcasts, the Top Med Talk team is in conversation with global thought leaders in perioperative care. Top Med Talk. We just had a guest sit down with us and one of our speakers today. Hey, could you introduce yourself? I'm Dr. Claire Gerarda and I'm a general practitioner, but I also run a service called the Practitioner Health Programme which is a service for doctors and dentists with mental health and addiction problems. And I'm going to be talking very shortly on the stresses of being an anaesthetist. And I'm going to be talking in particular why anaesthetists become mentally ill, why they don't become as mentally ill as other specialties within the medical profession, but why sadly, despite having lower levels of mental illness, they have much higher rates of death, death through suicide or death through uh, accidental death. But I'm also going to be talking about what an extraordinary profession it is to be an anaesthetist, how many of the factors in anaesthesia are actually protective factors, the team working, the excitement, the variability, the fact that you can, you don't need to take your job home, you can leave the patient literally on the intensive care unit and know that they're going to be safe. So I'm looking forward to talking. What I would say to any anaesthetist listening to this, if you're struggling and you're feeling despondent or finding it difficult to get up in the morning, finding it difficult to find the the energy to get to work or maybe drinking too much or maybe taking medicines or drugs from the ward, please seek help. I run a confidential service, www.php.nhs.uk, the Practitioner Health Service. So Claire, thank you for the work you do. Um, we, we relatively recently interviewed here on Top Med Talk um, Professor Paul Wishmeyer, who's a professor of anaesthesia, surgery and critical care from Duke University Medical Centre who told us that twice in his life he'd been addicted to narcotics. And the story he told us was that his addiction came from ill health, followed by probably misprescribing of narcotics, OxyContin in particular. But the really compelling part of the story, you know, that sadly is a familiar story, was that when he put his hand up as a physician and said that he was not coping and he needed help, he got all the help he needed. He got all the... He wasn't condemned, he, he, his license wasn't taken away. He could put his hand up in a fully supported environment and say, please help me. And, and Desiree, we did that interview together. That, is that what you heard? Absolutely, that's what I heard. I, d- I don't know if that's always the case. But, but for sadly, that isn't the case no. that in, like that in the United States at all anymore. That is actually more of the case now in the UK if you're lucky enough to find your way to my service. So we can contain your addiction as long as you stop and as long as you follow the advice that we're giving and as long as you're not putting patients at risk. We have a special memorandum of understanding with the General Medical Council so we can contain that. We work as a team so we can hold it together and hopefully we can help you through to recovery. About 75% of the doctors we have with addiction get better. Now, of course, addiction is a lifelong problem. You're just in recovery. You're never cured. But nevertheless, we get the doctors better and back to work. But on this, don't be scared to seek help. Uh, Certainly in our national guidelines, I checked them recently, it's crystal clear that you will be helped. You will not be... You won't be locked up, taken away, Your national struck guide, off. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the Association of Anaesthetists Guidelines supported by the College AA, of Anaesthetists. Yeah, yeah exactly. wonderful guidelines you've yeah. got, which are just about to be reviewed. But they're probably in a little bit of conflict with the General Medical Council Fitness to Practice guidelines that all doctors have to adhere to. I'm hoping with the revised guidelines that are going to be done fairly shortly, we can make that much clearer. And if... You put your hand up as an anaesthetist. If you follow the advice, we must allow you to have a safe space to get better. And I promise I will do everything I can to make sure that happens. But it's a bit ambiguous. And finally, if I can say it, we've got a conference, 4th and 5th of October 2018, 4th and 5th of October 2018, the end of this year, where we'll be looking at this issue much, much more 
Uh, it's a central London location. If you look online on the PHP website, you'll find the details. Please come along and support us. The more doctors, and dentists and nurses we have there, the better it is because we can then affect change. Yeah, fascinating. Thank you so much for joining us. Top Med Talk. Thanks for downloading and listening to Top Med Talk. Don't forget to find us on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, even got our own YouTube channel. Whichever your favourite social media feed is, we're bound to be there. Find us. Also, subscribe to this podcast so that you never miss an episode. And make sure you go to the Top Med Talk website, topmedtalk.com, and get on board with the email updates. Oh, whilst you're at it as well, I suggest you download our entire back catalogue we're categorizing at the moment we're having a little look through it It may not always be in the form that you currently find it so if you get your hard drive ready for a full-on download via the website perhaps or perhaps through your podcatcher oh and if you fancy meeting us why not go to the website ebpom.org forward slash meetings our next big event is ebpom usa the dallas masters course a perioperative care practicum have a look for details of that and some of the other meetings coming up across the next year. Edpom.org forward slash meetings.